Hello and welcome to part seven of the ArcSight ESM console training course. In this particular session, I'm going to be going through the web console. I'm not going to go through in a huge amount of detail. I just want to give an illustration of the differences between the web console, uh, what we call the ArcSight command center, as we can see here, ArcSight command center, uh, and the actual thick Java cl client itself. Um, specifically, initial look and feel is obviously very different. Uh, the web console itself is is much simpler and easier it, it, uh, it it's not got the level of sophistication of around some of the visualizations for example and some of the other tool sets for example the key thing here is I don't have access to what we call a common conditions editor so all of that nice little drop down boxes for editing and creating rules and so on it's not available within the ArcSight command center uh, what it is uh, more suitable to do is this is really a powerful tool to use as a um, kind of a level one or a level two analyst uh, operate a role uh, in using the system to do the initial sort of investigation and triage around events. And I hope to illustrate and, and demonstrate that as well. So this is typically the, the standard landing page that you get when you log in. Uh, this is the default view, but of course I can change this and change the layout and content and so on. But what I can see, and again, like I say, it's really optimized around level one and level two analysts. So we can see that there's some notifications and some cases have been allocated to me and so on. I got a nice little box to show that there's 12 outstanding alerts, which I guess I probably need to look at. Uh, but I'm just going to step through some of the aspects here of what we can do. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is pick on the dashboards. Uh, so of course, the dashboards are there. Uh, they are functionally rich. They are powerful. There's a whole set available for me uh, that I can view and we can see everything that's in there. So you know, what I'm going to just have a quick look at the ArcSight Express one, for example, and then look at the operating system and then I can just click that and view in this case this is the operating system uh, overview so we can see login events uh, what's successful what's failure who are the the worst culprits of this top users so we can see that root is a particularly bad user from there but this this John P user is there doing quite a lot top fail logins and so on so we've got access to the pie charts and charts uh, and the table events as well so we can see the relevant information there as you might expect this dashboard looks virtually the same within the console as well. Be aware that there are some limitations around how some of this is rendered and how this is viewed on the simplistic uh, interface, for example. Uh, but, you know, in general, we have full access to all the dashboards. So we can see, just as we would see with the uh, uh, the, the hierarchy of all of the uh, resources within the tree here, we see the same here within the dashboards as well. So we can see all the data there uh, that's available to us. The next thing I'm going to pick on is uh, events, active channels. So let's just go into an active channel. Now, I previously opened this, so it actually goes straight to uh, the, the demo live one, which is the one I tend to use most of. Uh, but of course, again, we've still got full access to all of the uh, active channels that are available. We can still see uh, all of the foundational stuff and Alex that Express and device type stuff. I go into devices there. We can see all this. Uh, let's just look at uh, all Microsoft events and I can just click on that. Again, we've got a tabular view where we can go backwards and forwards. So we can see all the events here. This is just Windows events. We can see all the events that are uh, available here. We've got the nice little uh, time chart here. Of course, if I wanted to, I could, of course, change the fields. I could add more fields in and remove fields as I want to, just like I can in the active channels within the console as well. And of course, if I wanted to actually dig into some of these events themselves, I could just highlight it and it, it makes these available to me. So I can add it to a case and do annotation, even markers reviewed, but I'm going to look at the details. I can look at the event itself uh, and I can see what's going on. I can see the information. It's a base event. We can go through all of the details. In this case, we get some geographic data, categorization information and so on, just as we'd normally expect to see. If I just jump back to my, my demo live there and just pick on a, a correlated event, again, the same here. If I do view details, I get to see all the actual triggers as well. So if there's base events here, uh, worth noting here, this is a correlated event. And this is statistical correlated event. So it's notes the slight different color there, uh, and it will actually tell me what the correlation triggers are and what's going on there too. But I get to see the event tree. It's all very simple. It's very common that you'd expect and, and, and exactly the same capabilities that we'd normally have have within the normal fat client we get it here in the web console as well and even down to the to the actual tabular views too
We've got access to all the reports. I'm not going to run a, run a report here, but again, just a view that you, you've got all the system reports and the solutions and so on. It's all in there as you'd normally expect to see. Uh, and of course, I can access all those reports too and run them. But more importantly, let's jump to things like the cases. This is typically more important with regards to the level one, level two analyst kind of capability. We want to be able to understand what are the notifications. So what I've received here, you know, for example, there's 12 notifications here and how do they actually attach to the cases and what's going on. So these are some cases that have been previously generated. So again, I can just see the case. I can click on the case. It takes me through. Uh, this is already open that I've already had a case and I could lock it and, uh, and then I can start making some additions to. I can actually see the events that are attached to this uh, and actually go through those individual events as well as I'd normally expect to see. Uh, so it's exactly as I would normally uh, use the system. Uh, I can uh, enter some follow on actions and so on. And when I'm ready, I can save it. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to abandon those changes. But we can see as a mechanism, as a simplistic way, as a level one or level two analyst, I can access that information very simple and straightforward. Uh, don't worry about applications. That's when you use the uh, risk view application. In this case, I don't have that installed here. But probably the biggest single difference between the ArcSight command center and the console is this free text search capability. So uh, I'm actually just jumping into the event search. So I just jump into the event search here and it just gives us a very simple view. And anybody that's been used to Logger, for example, will see this as being very common, very simple and straightforward to what they're used to viewing in, in Logger. And broadly, the functionality is very, very similar. Expected to be the same, expected to operate the same and expected to be able to view how it's going to operate with regards to this as well. So just to give a view, of course, following on from part six uh, with the rules, I could do my fail failed login rule. I could just type that, do a search, and it'll come back with the responses. And hey, presto, there's my two of my hits that I've seen uh, from my rule that I created a minute ago. Obviously, it's a few minutes after, and the time window has been defined as 10 minutes. So you can kind of see what's what's going on here. It's very simple and straightforward, uh, and I can get to all the data. Uh, and of course, it's just free text. Of course, I could just do uh, John P, which is the username that was often generating some of those failed login events. Um, of course, I'm not getting anything, but if I extend the time range, just changing that. Hey presto, we get a bunch load of events and I can actually dig in. So it's a really good interface to, to do some simplistic searching, to do some investigation, to look at both correlated events as well as base events uh, and just do some simple searching around that. I could even do a simple table and graph as well. Um, but, but that just gives you a view from an operator's point of view. That's the biggest single difference. This capability is not available in the console, in the FAT client. It's only available in the ArcSight command center, this web console. But again, as I mentioned earlier, the ArcSight command center does not have the common conditions editor so i can't create any rules or any filters or anything i can only use what's present in there the final thing i'd pick out is the administration tab here so we've got the ability to do some simple configuration management around the system itself so we can do things like content management and synchronize data and, and uh, content between systems we can manage users and connected configuration uh, to do some simple management aspects of things we can look at the storage and archiving capabilities so what if we need to go back through previous archives and we can just enable those to allow us to search in those, for example, in this search interface, uh, we can look at any saved filters and searches we've created here. For example, just here, we could save a search uh, and then we can do some other capabilities around uh, retrieving logs and defining peers and so on. Um, but that's defining a configuration if you've got the rights to do so. If you don't have the rights, because I'm logged in as a, an admin user, uh, you wouldn't actually have those capabilities. So yeah, it's just there as, as a, a simple interface to allow you to manage those aspects. But hopefully that's a good illustration of the differences between the ArcSight console, the, the FAT 
Java client uh, or, and the ArcSight command center, which is the web interface itself. So, and a very aimed at different roles there. One is aimed around uh, the analyst who is, who is looking to solve use cases and how that works and how that operates. And the other one is very much focused around level one, level two analysts and doing investigations and searching for data uh, and, and actually doing updates to things. So of course, thinking about it from a, a very simple view of how an analyst would use some of this, of course, the great thing is I can actually get to a lot of this data simply and easily. It's just straightforward searching. Of course, I can just look at an event here. Uh, I can actually add that to a case and, and create it. Uh, I could, uh, let me just cancel that. I could uh, take this particular my failed login rule. I could annotate it and put some information there and say, I'm going to put this in an initial, uh, initial view. And of course, it's all fully supported as part of this as well. So it gives you the ability to do most of the standard processes and procedures you would expect to use as a level one, level two analyst, and a very straightforward and easy to use, and more important, easy to train interface for uh, a level one and a level two analyst to get to grips with. Very simple and very straightforward. So anyway, that's a quick run through of the ArcSight Command Center, the differences to the ArcSight console, uh, and it concludes the uh, first of the training sessions around uh, the ArcSight ESM real-time correlation platform. Thank you very much for your time.